In the 90s, Honda had two SUVs, the CRV, which soldiers on today as the brand's best seller. The other SUV was the truck-based OG Honda Passport based on the Isuzu Rodeo. But in 2002, Honda was ready to replace the Passport with an all-new three-row family hauler named the Pilot. Fast forward 20 years and three generations, Honda is now ready to roll out its fourth generation Pilot and in many ways is paying homage to the off-road capability of the original Honda Passport. We have a massive press release uh, to sift through today. What we'll do first though is go through the photos, talk about the design. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. Talk about Japanese and Korean cars. Just a couple days from now, I will be driving uh, the all new Honda Civic Type R on road and on track. So make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell icon. And if you're excited for the new pilot, smash the like button. And let's get into this all new fourth generation pilot. So here we are. Here's the all new Honda Pilot for the fourth generation 2023. What we're looking at is the Trail Sport model. They talk a lot about this new uh, upgraded Trail Sport. It has this exclusive blue color, I'll put exactly what it is in the captions, but this styling definitely is taking a page out of the new CRV, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Think of this as almost like a CRV that's been enlarged, but it's not on the same platform. It's actually on the MDX's light truck platform, uh, which is an all new platform. This is only the second vehicle that I'm aware of that is on this all new platform. I still have the MDX Type S in my uh, garage right now for review so definitely stay tuned for that as well now this trail sport of course has a lot of black cues we have smaller 18 inch wheels we have about uh, about a one inch lift on this we have upgraded suspension you have skid plates underneath we have these roof rails blacked out mirror blacked out window surrounds let's go to the next image looking from the back here what do you think about this rear end some of you guys say hey this is a big upgrade from the minivan looking Third generation, I would probably agree with that. I like the paint matched C pillar here as well. And kind of this area does kind of remind me of probably that second generation pilot, uh, which is very, very boxy. This is definitely, I don't know, I'm almost getting some GM vibes from this uh, angle here in the back. If I remember correctly, it can also tow 5,000 pounds. I'll correct that if it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, from the side, looks pretty good. Definitely looks a lot better, like I said, than this third, than the third outgoing third generation black handles on this uh, Trail Sport as well. Um, it has an upgraded IVTM4 system. Uh, it's now on the same level as essentially the MDX's uh, super handling all wheel drive. Uh, so it can send, I think, 70% of the torque to the rear wheels and then up to like 100% of the torque uh, to one of the rear wheels of that 70% total, if that makes sense. We'll go over it into a little bit more detail because there is a new trail mode that's only available on this trail sport. You can also get this all wheel drive IVTM4 True Torque Vectoring on the Elite trim as well. There's a bunch of trim levels. Now we don't have a lot of images guys of the interior, this is it. So we have a panel roof that is available on some of the higher trims uh, as well as this trail sport. And then what we have on the inside is essentially the, uh, I mean the Civic. Yeah, the Civic debuted with this sort of interior. On the entry trims, I think it's just the 7-inch uh, MID uh, with an analog speedometer. And then on the upper trims, it is a fully digital MID behind here. Uh, unlike the new Accord, which will get debuted and revealed, I should say, by the end of this year, um, we don't get a 12-inch screen. So it's a 7-inch screen on the base models and every other trim other than the base, which is the sport trim, the sport is the base. Every other trim above that gets the 9-inch the screen, which is wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, which is pretty cool. Here are those amazing knobs. Now, it doesn't look like, guys, I'm looking here, I don't see that mesh pattern uh, grill that or that the honeycomb grill, I should say, that we see on the Civic. This looks a little bit I don't know, it looks like a compartment in here where you can store some things and then just some basic vents. Uh, nothing too fancy. I guess you have some glossy black, black vents on this particular trail sport grade. Uh, we have the three knobs in the middle for climate control. I love that. Makes me happy. Here is going to be your wireless charger down here if it's equipped with it. And then you have USB-C, USB-A here, 12 volt adapter. You still have the push button. Um, and I like this interior actually, at least the layout of the interior of this new pilot better than the MDX. MDX is very busy with like the drive mode knob in the middle. 
Uh, so I just like the simplicity and the cleanliness and minimalism of this new pilot on the interior. Uh, this trail sport also has some orange stitching, uh, you know, accenting the steering wheel, etc. If I go to the next image, you see trail sport here on the headrest. It's uh, not the first trail sport model. I believe there was a pilot trail sport for the third gen. Don't think very many people knew about that trim. Uh, and of course the passport was the first uh, vehicle to have that trail sport kind of off-road identity. And this is the first trail sport that actually gives it more off-roading prowess. It has a one inch lift, like I mentioned, skid plates, uh, and a new trail mode that beefs up the off-roading capabilities as well. This is the only image I believe we have of a non-trail sport model. So what we're looking at here is probably like the elite trim, uh, which is going to have 20 inch wheels and keep in mind. 20 inch wheels come standard on the sport model. So the base grade gets 20 inch wheels. When you go up to the EXL, it goes down to 18s. And I think when you're in the elite, uh, as well as the touring trims, I think those are the two top trims. Those both have 20 inch wheels as well. And even though this is not the trail sport, we do have blacked out window surrounds. We do have a little chrome here to accent the top of the, the grill as well as the headlights and a little bit of maybe a dark chrome down here. It's kind of tell, hard to tell because it's cloudy and raining. Uh, but it looks like we could have some blacked out roof rails as well. But again, kind of hard to tell with the lighting and the rain. Let's get into these bullet points. It is the most powerful Honda SUV ever. Uh, they have an all new engine. We'll discuss what they did to this engine here in a little bit. Uh, all new tough and adventure ready styling uh, complements pilots offer capabilities and on-road dynamics. Pilot Trail Sport is the most rugged Honda SUV ever. I've kind of already detailed that. It does have standard all-terrain tires, the skid plates, higher ground clearance, and off-road tune suspension and more. New modern upscale cabin with sophisticated materials and premium touches. And the Pilot is the king of carpool lane with flexible seating, uh, seating and more spacious second and third rows. Uh, goes on sale next month. I didn't mention that, but it does have uh, five different trim levels. So I guess it's December. It'll go on sale in December of 2022. Uh, and we have the Sport, which is the base trim, the EXL. We have the Trail Sport, uh, which is kind of in the middle, and it's arguably probably the best looking one. And then you have the Touring and the Elite. Now, I don't know if the Trail Sport, even though it's kind of in the middle, it might not be priced like in the middle. Uh, we don't have pricing right now, so definitely stay tuned. I'll, I'll share pricing when I get it. So even though the displacement of the engine is the same, it does have more horsepower. So it's an all new engine underneath the hood of this vehicle it has 285 horsepower. Also, there is an available on the higher trims, a removable second row seat that can be conveniently stowed underneath the rear cargo floor. Kind of reminds me of the MDX has that removable uh, seat in the middle. So you can have captain's chairs uh, if you want. It has the most passenger and cargo space in the pilot's history. It boasts best in class overall passenger space and top class cargo volume behind the third row seats. Now there's a bunch of bullet points here. I believe I've covered just about all of them. I have not gone over trail watch camera system, which kind of gives you that top down camera or 360 camera for uh, the trail sport as well as the elite model. So if you want the 360 camera, you have to go for those two trims. It will be built in the Alabama plant. No surprise, they've been building the pilot there for a long time now. Now I could go over how they break down the packages here, but I'd rather just look at it in a like graph form. So we go down to the bottom here, new engine has five more horsepower than the old one. Torque is the same, however. Um, here are your different drive modes. Remember trail is only gonna be available on that trail sport model that I'm aware of. 10 speed automatic comes in here uh, that we see in the MDX and then let's say the Odyssey, for example, really good 10 speed auto. So here are your wheel sizes. Sport gets 20 inch, EXL gets 18 inch as well as the trail sport uh, and the touring and the elite both get 20 inch wheels and they have different finishes of course on each individual trim if you want to look at the wheelbase it's up to about 114 inches which is let's say a longer than the 112 inches that we have on like the lx 600 from lexus so it's it's a pretty big wheelbase here length is is uh about 200 inches even here height somewhere around 71 to 72 inches of course the trail sport's going to be the tallest as it has about a one inch lift on it right at 78 and a half inches this is the widest pilot ever as well and we also have a wider track it does say honda sensing here is standard but what i don't know is if like is blind spot monitor standard i don't know if uh anything about that at this point in time a seven inch driver screen um, is going to be standard, but you can get a fully digital MID behind the steering wheel only on the Elite trim. 
Uh, seven inch touchscreen, like I said, is standard, and the rest of them get the nine inch with the uh, wireless Apple CarPlay. But you can still get it wired on that base sports screen. Uh, and then also when you go for the wireless Apple CarPlay, they give you the wireless charging as a benefit as well. Of course, the vehicle and the suspension is stiffer than ever, more rigid than ever. Uh, we also have larger brakes than before, which is a really good thing to see. We also have a hill descent control system, which we saw in the new HRV earlier this year. It is standard on every pilot, so you don't need to get all wheel drive, for example, for that. They have more acoustical spray foam insulation, fender liners, and a thicker carpet and other sound absorbing technologies to reduce wind, road, and powertrain noise. That's great. I thought the new CRV hybrid was really, really quiet, but it's almost like it seemed they, there was like just a, a really good amount of like white noise that kind of just mellowed everything out. I wouldn't say it was quiet, but it was very peaceful, if that makes sense. They're really, really into this new trail sport, which I'm not going to go too much into. There's the new paint color, Diffused Sky Blue, only on trail sport. All season floor mats coming uh, with the exclusive trail sport design on this. So it has off-road tuned suspension with the one inch lift. It has unique stabilizer bars as well. Spring rates and damper valve tuning are exclusive to the trail sport as well. We have standard continental terrain contact AT or all terrain tires. They say they're capable in off-road conditions and, and snow and rain, but still quiet and comfortable on the road. So we have thick steel skid plates protecting the trail sports oil pan transmission and gas tank and they can support the entire weight of the vehicle crashing down on a rock up to twice the gvwr of the vehicle can be supported by the new skid plates so this new trail mode has this trail logic that controls the amount of power going to the rear axle in certain situations as much as 75 percent of available power available power is routed to the individual tire with the most traction the remaining 25 percent of torque is sent to the non-tractive wheel to allow immediate transfer of dry force once the tire contacts the ground again if you want to see how it works a little bit more just go ahead and pause the video here i'm not going to go into it too much so what do i think about the new pilot it is i think adequate in terms of styling i think the trail sport looks pretty cool i want to see all the different trim levels to see which one really looks the best but i'm assuming the trail sport is probably going to be the most desirable one in, in terms of aesthetics it's good to see we get a, a little bit of something when it comes to the powertrain we have a new engine five more horsepower is anyone going to notice probably not but it's going to be probably in theory uh have less emissions maybe not more fuel efficient but we'll we will i guess we'll have to wait to see um it would have been great to have a hybrid absolutely especially with the uncertainty of gas prices uh there's one thing that's certain is gas prices are pretty high right now so this thing is going to be getting 18 to 20 miles per gallon would be my guess but the v6 is a great selling point for this vehicle as well as let's say the nissan pathfinder which has the v6 versus the highlander that's being a forced either with a hybrid or a turbo the hybrid is definitely the way to go in the highlander in my opinion probably even over the outgoing v6 unless you need to tow with it but honda has great hybrids as well if you haven't watched my driving impressions of the new crv hybrid but that hybrid is not powerful enough for this sort of large uh, vehicle or light truck application 202 or 204 horsepower i think that vehicle has something like that in the crv hybrid that's just not going to cut it in a vehicle this large. They would need to have a V6 hybrid or a turbo four cylinder hybrid or something of that nature in order to have this thing to be fuel efficient and powerful at the same time. But I don't think they'll be investing in a large vehicle hybrid, even though I think the market would really, really be interested in it. But I'm gonna end it there. What do you guys think of the new pilot? Can't wait to drive it. Definitely stay tuned. I will be able to drive it. Stay tuned for the new Accord reveal. Stay tuned for the Civic Type R driving impressions. A lot of Honda stuff coming down the hatch. Uh, and then Acura as well, like my MDX Type S family review that I'll be uh, filming tomorrow. But got to cut myself off. Guys, have a great week. Take care of yourselves. So you enjoyed the video, made it this far. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace.